Welcome back to the Painters Guild. I am Will Friedell, and we are here once again with our very special guest star, Mr. Matthew Mercer. Hello! Who is here to try to teach me some of the techniques needed to paint uh, minis uh, to make them look uh, uh, at least slightly passable, which I am nowhere near being able to do yet. So we'll if, there. yeah, we'll get there we'll slowly, get there. slowly, but slowly. Um, if you remember uh, last week, we started by uh, prepping and priming, and now we are painting, finally. We so. are painting. Well, patience is in there as well. You have patience, patience, and then today we do the painting. Yeah, that's true. There wasn't a lot of patience last week, because I just want to jump into it, but once again, if you skip any of the steps, you don't get where you want to go. So, uh, we are, have our two guys from last week still. Yeah, these are our dark young. From the uh, Mansions of Madness Call of the Wild expansion, one of my favorite minis they put out, and uh, painted black. Painted white for the priming, and we are ready to go ahead and get in. Ready to go, so why don't we uh, all sit back, roll up our sleeves, and get ready to start painting. Mm. It's the time of truth, that's all I gotta say. Finally, after all this time, we get to paint. I'm ex very excited to, to, to paint it up, so what's next? What well, do great. we do? Now we get to pick our paints. Yes. So, I'm gonna go ahead and pull this up, get a glance through this majestic collection oh, okay. of paints here. Again, and start. I say we should've gotten the bigger one, but all right. I know, it's okay. This is definitely not the starter set. This is a, a collection of, of well-loved paints and uh, various other uh, pigments. Yeah. So picking from here, this will define what we want the actual color of your dark young to be. So um, and I can pick whatever I want, right? Whatever you want as a base color. I'd, I'd recommend starting dark and then go lighter. So okay, that makes sense. That makes sense. But could I do something like the uh, like the dragon blue? Is this dark enough? Well, the dragon blue will work good for your final color, but so not for but not for not like for the base. The base color. So okay. you want to go with the darker, darker, darker blue before that. So we have. Well, that's a good question. If I'm going to end up blue, would my base color have to be blue? Could I start with a gray and pop the blue? You could definitely do that too. Yeah. Would that be a better way to go, or should I go blue and blue? Ah, uh, you know what? Let's go ahead and start with the gray and then go blue gradually. Okay. So we'll look through here. Here's Paul. I love the titles. These are always my favorite. Here's Mountain Stone. What about that? Mountain Stone's actually pretty good. Mountain Stone. Tell me that doesn't sound like a um, like a local weatherman. <laughs> Hi, I'm Mountain Stone. I'm Mountain Stone. Welcome to your day's weather. <laughs> it does. Uh, you know, actually, Mountain Stone with a bit of the, uh, the the blue in it might make the right color for the base. So you mean to, to mix the two? Oh man, we're already moving on to mixing. All yeah, right, I know. all right. That's all part right. of the process, Fair man. Enough. Before. We start. I think there is an important step we have to take. What's that step? I think we need to smock up. Smock up. We're gonna smock up. Let's do this. Oh, look at that! We are smocked up and ready we to paint. We are so smocked. Now you're talking about we should already be mixing. Are we? Are we jumping into a different type of brush as well? Uh, we are actually. This, this is gonna be similar to the prime brush because it's just the base coat, which means you want to okay. go ahead and get a relatively thick brush. Okay. And you're gonna be painting everything that's going to be, need to be this base color. So looking at the model here, you have a few details to consider. You have a mouth with a tongue and teeth in three different places here. Right. Um, Which obviously won't be the base color, you would probably imagine. Probably not, okay. unless you want it to be. And you have the toe pieces, these these interesting little kind of... Hooves. Hoof nails here. Okay. Um, you can paint over those if you want to, or leave them, and we can paint them another color later on. Okay. Um, but. Everything else, for the most part, is going to be your base color. Yeah. Okay. So go ahead and, and put down a, a fair amount because it's gonna, there's a lot to cover there. A fair amount of your mountain stone. Do I have to shake these up too? I recommend early? shaking okay, them up before so, you so go. So shake them up yeah. first. Now is when it gets creepy. Yeah. You just hey, do this. Well, hi. It's a lot hi of fun. How's everybody doing? Yeah. Thanks for it's having really me on. Great. It's, it's like a, a shake weight. All right. <laughs> I'm sorry, but the paint's also making a bizarre sound yeah. as you're doing that, so it's yeah. pretty horrifying. Yeah, it's great. It's All great. right, so we're putting down. <laughs> tell me when. I'd say that's probably a good amount to start with. Okay, as far as the base there cocos. we go. So you have some mountain stone down. Go ahead and add just a little bit of the dragon blue to it. Okay. Just a hint. Just a hint. About just a, hint. a little more. A little more. That's good there. Okay. Start there. All now right. mix up your brush in there and see what kind of color comes through at that point. Okay. This is where you'd lose me as a kid, because no matter what colors I mixed, it would end up brown. It seriously didn't matter what it was. It's like, oh, look, here's yellow and red. I got brown. Great. Ooh, digging that. All righty. Once you're comfy, okay. go ahead and start applying it liberally around all areas that are primed, except for the tongues, the teeth, and the toes. Tongues, teeth, and toes. We're doing a lot of alliteration on today. Apparently, that's the theme. 
I already hit the toe. I already hit the toe. It's okay if you do. It's okay. Oh, gosh. It's like being at Color Me Mine, but I don't hate myself. <laughs> <laughs> yes. You know what I mean? That's exa I know exactly what you mean. Because <laughs> you usually look up with the girl you're with, and you're like, I can't believe we're at a date with Color Me Mine, and this is the worst internet date I've ever been on. <laughs> You know what I mean. And then you have to pay for a mug you don't want. Yeah. So it's like that, but way better. But you've already paid for it, so you don't throw it away, and every time you open like right. the cabinet and look inside, like, you're like, oh, oh I remember, I remember that. that girl. My Ooh. God. I wonder where my wallet is. <laughs> yeah. I can just say, I've been doing this for about 20 minutes, and I want to cut off my ear. <laughs> so, <laughs> I absolutely get what uh, poor Mr. Van Gogh was going through. Also, what you can see, based on the difference between the primers, we used, you being white and mine using the black primer, uh, the coloration is distinctly different. Mine, mine's a little darker. Oh, it's way darker. Yeah, 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 way darker. Mine's more like an elephant gray, and yours is, I don't even know, a titanium uh, kind of. A, a dirtier elephant. Yeah, much dirtier yeah, elephant. Yeah, yeah nice. Works. Well, an elephant <laughs> never forget. So. Masters of analogy here. We are, yeah, exactly. At the table. Wait till you see our animal show. We're going, hey, there's another <laughs> elephant. I will say, one of the benefits of priming black, in my opinion, if you have uh, a creature or a beast or a character that is supposed to be kind of a darker, evil, yeah. kind of intense type personality, um, you can get away with not painting everything sometimes because the areas you don't paint stay black. Look like uh, they're in makes, shadow. Uh, makes sense. It totally makes sense, yeah. We'll go to the next paint section. So, alrighty. So, right here, we have a wide array of brushes. And you can find these at hobby stores, you can find them at a uh, stores that sell miniature paints and such, you have uh, small, tiny detail brushes, the very, very thin point at the end that you use for very, very small details. Look at this. Uh, or this one here, if you take the top off, you can see it's, this is a, uh, looks to be a smaller possible dry brush for detailed areas. Unbelievable. Um, and you want to keep these plastic covers to make sure they don't get damaged when you're storing them. That makes sense. Um, so for this portion, you know, they have these little they're, they're kind of a medium size here, so I'm going to use this brush for mine, and then for you as a detail brush, I'm going to give you this piece here. Okay. Look at that. So, you have a little more of a fine control. Yeah, I was going to say, there's no there's none of the flyaways from the last kind of brush I was looking at. Yes, yeah, so that's why it's important to keep good good uh, care of your brushes, it gives you that fine point to work with there. Good to know. So, holding on to the paints we have there, what, what kind of paints do you want to do for, like, the tongue? What kind of colorization are you looking for the tongue? I'd like some to, like a good pop of color. I think something something maybe a a, a, a bright yellow orangey kind of orangey yellow reddish kind of okay, color. Would okay, okay, cool. cool. So go ahead and look through here and see if there's a color. All right. Well, this is a marigold yellow. Maybe something like a marigold yellow with a with a pop of red or a, a, something like that could be kind of neat, couldn't it? Okay, yeah. So so what you would do is you want to start with the darker color first. Sure. Okay. So if you want it to be like makes sense. If you want it to have like a highlight of an orangish kind of kind of almost like a day glow pop. Yeah. Then you want to start with the darker red as the base. That makes sense. Alright, so go so ahead and grab that. Brilliant red. I'm gonna go ahead. Which is non-toxic, which is good because I'm gonna drink a couple of these later. Well that's part of the process. That's is make you taste the paints before you that's try That's what them. I thought it was. Don't ever do that, please. Please I was don't just don't drink the paints. Don't do that, people. guys. Let's uh, not we're drink really the paints. bad at this. Let's I'm not so drink sorry. The paints. Um all right, I'm gonna go ahead and start with uh, actually, I'm going to start with this, a darker red, actually. A darker red here. Okay. So if we're going to mix to make anything darker, I'll just have this big old thing of black paint there to the side as well. Okay. Um, all right, so what color do you want for the hooves? Ooh, that's right. we got to hoof it up, too. Like a, like a jet black, or do you want them a little brighter, like a brighter gray elephant style? or? No, I'm thinking a jet black could be kind of cool. Well, we have so a we jet got black. The black. We got the right black there. there, so I think that's. I think that'll be cool. I also have a uh, a blade. Ooh, blade <coughs> steel. I just like the sound. Oh, and it of might it. have a little metallic to it. Yeah. To yeah. Maybe I'll try some blade right. steel. Why not try them? Sweet. And for the teeth, you want something that pops against yeah, 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 like, the yeah. dark colors. It can. I mean, can we just go like a straight up white? Yeah, we can go. Some, we can something like that. Is, do it, that. is Is that a, a horribly unforgiving color? Because everything else is kind of gray, or no, no. I mean, white will work, and we can also dull it down a bit too, or mix it with black to make it even like a, like a nastier gray if it doesn't work out what you want. That's a bleached, bleached linen. linen. That could work that could actually. Work. That's it's not quite cool. as bright. All right, we'll go with that. I might use that for my teeth as well. You got so. it. I just Perfect. like the names too. I'm gonna go ahead and add a little bit of black to mine to darken it up. Go ahead. Go ahead. You can do the same if you're feeling that, just to kind of give it more of a more dangerous color. Yours is a pretty vibrant red. It's a red. very vibrant red. So I might put just a, a schizosh. And you only the, the black tends to darken it pretty quickly, so you want to use it sparingly. You can always darken it more as it goes. All right, all right, all right. Mix, damn you! Wow, it really did. I put a tiny little drop, and it's now just black. 
How did I, br I broke it? It's you did broken. break it. You did break it. I broke it. Okay, I put one, again. one drop. Literally one drop of the black in the red. So do I? Should I add red to this or just start? No, over? start over. Damn it! Let's I start. Broke it. Let's start with the black. The just, just do a little bit of black. It, okay. it goes a long I broke way. The paint. So now start taking bits of that. Okay. And then watch on my end. Yeah, yeah. You'll go ahead and start filling in the gums around the teeth. You can go over the teeth. It's totally fine. And use the tip of the brush to kind of, kind of mark that line right there. Okay. Now well, here goes nothing. I'm so nervous. I can't. I seriously. I've I've literally played a show at the Royal Albert Hall for ten thousand people, and I was not nearly as nervous as I am right now to paint this thing. <laughs> it's horrifying. Good, good. You realize quickly it's really not that scary. So paint over the gums and the tongue. And the tongue. Wait, watch you. Let me see your tongue. Okay. That, that sounded weird. <laughs> oh, be... I feel like I'm gagging him. You are. But he likes it. Well, that got weird. <laughs> Anyway. Anywho. Oh, it's so much easier with this tiny little delicate brush. Isn't it though? Yeah. It's unbelievable how much more control you have with this brush. I'm still gonna suck, but I'm gonna suck in such a more controlled way. <laughs> oh man, it makes so a like, total difference. So see in there you go over the tongue, the teeth, and the gums, and it kind of fills the inside of the mouth and gives it that kind of awful kind of bloody interior. So do the whole, all the teeth too? Yeah, go over the teeth, go over the inside of the mouth. Basically you want to get rid of all the white available Yeah. to cover it with any other color you have. I'm going to go a little darker here. What the hell? I'm allowed to, right? This yeah. is America. This isn't Russia. I can do whatever I want. <laughs> so how, like that? Yeah, yeah. And then get it on, on the inside of the, the mouth to see the teeth on each side of the tongue a little bit. So wait, the teeth on each side of the tongue like... If you look at the base of the tongue in the back, on the bottom like side. Like there, gotcha. So now, now go ahead and do that with the other two mouths, and you'll be done with the mouth portions of this guy and the base coats. All right. This is so... Man, it really is zen, though, isn't it? Especially now that you're into kind of the detail stuff. The details where you really get to kind of just get quiet and concentrate. Well, I never get quiet. Well, for the average Joe, there not you go. Will Fidel. No. So here's a question for you. Has anybody made a mini based on a character you have created on Critical Role? Um, I've, we've had many sent by fans who they've customized them and then painted them to look like characters from the campaign, NPCs from the campaign. Really? And a few of them of me, which has been very surreal that's and crazy. That's kind of cool. Actually, I think now that I mention it, I think somebody did give me a cash one, something that was... Oh, like, that's so cool! That was like that, but... Uh, I mean, what about some of the creatures? Have you, have you, because you've invented some of the creatures too, haven't you? I've invented a few creatures for our campaign, yeah. I don't think I've had got any minis of the ones that I've created necessarily. That would be cool. But there's been some really creative creatures that have come uh, as gifts from fans, which has been really, really neat to see happen. That's awesome. Um, so there's a little paint that I went down the bottom, but in my head, he just ate this guy. So a little bit of the blood is stripping down. <laughs> there you go. See, that's cool. where a backstory comes into play. Man, it makes it easier to handle when it is uh, dry. Yeah, yeah, it does. Now I don't have to wipe my brush, clean my brush in between, right? No, no, you don't have to unless it starts getting dunked up. Um, I'm doing it because I, I finished painting that color on my guy. Yeah, I noticed. You don't have to rub it in, but I appreciate that. No, I just wanted to point out. No, that it's like yeah, no, no, yeah, yeah, hey, yeah, it's all good. Okay. Just, I'm just waiting for you to finish. Yeah, when you get yours. yeah my, my my wallet's too small for my fifty, and my diamond shoes are too tight. I get it. <laughs> It's the Friends reference, sorry. It's the Chandler reference in the middle of nowhere. <laughs> You're doing great, though. Thank it's already you. looking awesome. It's getting there, right? Yeah, yeah. It's yeah, not, yeah. I didn't stay in all the lines, but... You don't need to. You can always go back and fix it later. Okay. So while that dries, go ahead and wash your brush off. Washing off the brush here. Here we go. Mm -hmm. It's a and you can pull it off and kind of like dry it off. You want to make sure that you don't dry it face down. Uh, oh, you don't? Oh, because then that's where you get the little flyaways, right? Yeah, that's right? where it's actually ruining the brush. You want to kind okay. of dry it by pulling it back on the line along with the length that's of the good brush. Good to know here. Let me do this right. Because I would have just gone... Mm. Don't do that. Don't do that. And also, what I noticed a lot of people did, myself included as a kid, is you'd go to the bottom of the of the cup. Yeah, do not jam like, it in the bottom do, either. To get the paint out. <laughs> um, again, patience, patience, yeah. patience. Okay. Alrighty, so I'll take, take that away. Take a sip. It looks like pink lemonade. Oh, sweet. There no. you go. Uh... All right, so now while that's drying, you can hold on to the top portion of it and work on the hooves. So okay. what color do you want to make the hooves? You were talking about maybe like the uh, 
What did we have the ho for the hooves? You had the blade steel. That's right. I had the blade steel for the hooves. For I'm gonna go ahead and go straight black with mine. Straight black. Alrighty. So I'm finishing up the, the nails here. I am uh, right behind you, actually. These aren't taking nearly as long. See, look at that. You're right. The one thing I have noticed is that all my screw ups from before, like when I went over and painted the nail by accident and blah blah blah, they really are covered this way around. Yeah. So you don't need to worry that much with the initial coats because eventually you'll you'll have the opportunity with the finer brush to correct the mistakes you made and paint over them. That really does make a difference and there's it's also pointing out even more mistakes I've made that I have to go back <laughs> and do with the gray. Of course he could also be in a realm where he's caught some strange skin disease. This also is again viable. where the backstory also comes viable. in. You're, you're slowly designing the narrative for your That's creature. That's what you gotta do. It's like... <laughs> go ahead and rinse your brush there for a bit. Dry it out and then go ahead and... What, what gray we still have wet there. See if you can correct some of the areas yeah. you want to fix up yeah, on that yeah. end. We're going to gray up. All right. Now, does it matter if the brush is wet going into the paint? Uh, it doesn't matter. I mean, you want it kind of dry. Otherwise, it might dilute the paint and make it a little too runny. So, do I, now, again, I'm going to show this over here on camera. So is this something I'd want to do go like this and fold over to dry you or can. no? You can. I'd recommend just, 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 just doing this, that way. Just yeah. like this. That's usually enough for it. Okay. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. All right, so now what I want to do is because, like, I see like around the toes. See how like right. these these kind of areas here, I would like to gray up. So this is good to kind of. I feel good going over a little bit because it's just kind of. Yeah. I can like I'm getting the, the tiny little. Because it man it now I'm just seeing every little mistake that I made. And there are lots of them. That's okay. It's a little gap in there you could actually cover there. It helps when you have a friend pointing them out, too. <laughs> it help, buddy. Just, just want to make sure. So at this point, like, you're pretty close to, like, all the base coats are done. If you aren't terribly invested in, like, perfect miniatures for your game, this is good enough for the table to just make it look interesting and, you know, dangerous as opposed to an unpainted model. So then essentially what you're saying is there comes a point where you have to put it down and not worry about every tiny little thing you can if you're be. just going to play. Yeah, if you're just a hobbyist and you just want it to not look plain out of the out of the box, this is more than enough to at least look different and interesting and dangerous on the field. Okay. Um, but we're going to take it past that. But you could leave it as it is right now, and it would still look pretty cool and intimidating. Okay, well, it looks, yeah, it looks great. I mean, from where it was to where it is now, yeah. even I can look at that and go, hey, that's not, not horrible. Yeah. That's pretty cool. But let's go ahead and do a fun little bit with the teeth. Ooh. So you just put a little bit of the... That color down there. Okay. I'm gonna do a bit myself on this end. And now for this, this is very, very fine detail work. You only get a little bit of white on the very tip, like it's like that much right there. You can see it's just a very, very small. I feel like there's still little a little bit. gray on the tip of my brush. That's and a, that, is that gonna screw with the white? No, it should be fine. Okay. Because what you're doing here is you watch. I'm gonna watch this, this first. This. Yeah, let me watch this first. You just do a little. That's it. And it's individual, little tooth, little tooth, little tooth. Little, little tooth, because the darkness that you've already put behind it helps it pop and show up against the rest of the inside oh, of the mouth. this is so intricate, the work here now. Now it starts becoming a horrible gnashing jaw of sharp teeth. But it, with some pretty good dentistry to be this white. Yeah, yeah. Well, you know. That's the thing. I mean, you look about it, it's the old, like... The old gods get good, good, good dental yeah, exactly. and visual. Exactly. Just because I'm ripping you apart doesn't mean I shouldn't floss. <laughs> you know, there's no excuse to get rid of dental. You know what I mean? It's like that kind of thing. Okay. Now, do you want to keep... I guess this is all preference now, because if you want to keep a little red on some of the teeth... Like well, it's you could, a little We'll go blood, over it later or, for that. Oh, really? So there's, so how's, like, how's that? That's good, yeah. Is that, is that kind of what we're looking for? Yeah, yeah. Something like that? See, and you could even go a little lighter on the other ones to just do the faint bit and let the, so see how they kind of Oh, yeah, how yours are freaking perfect! So what you can do now is you can get back, go back and get some of your red and fill between if you wanted to have a little more of a, that gap showing. Oh, you know what? Then, well, let me try it on a second. Maybe I can gap it more on this one yeah, here. So just, just, just a very, very faint bit of the tip and just lightly touching the very, very edges of where the teeth are. Like that. Yeah, see? That's all you gotta do for that. that just that? Just like that? Just like that. Even, even I'll maybe even get a little more of a... on the edge, right? There you go. Yep. That tooth's done. You can do the next one like that. Yep, and just leave those gaps oh, in between. Oh yeah, that makes a huge difference when you leave the gap there. 
See? Tiny little techniques. That's all it is. Tiny little techniques. And it makes a huge difference. Still doesn't look as good as yours, but what the hell. <laughs> like that. Yeah, it looks great. But that's what I'm that's what I mean about talent against technique. Because obviously you've got it down. You got the talent, you can see how you want it. But technique wise, you made me change one little thing, do a little and it yep. changed the whole look of the mouth. Exactly. So it's all once you understand the technique and have that perspective, you realize it's not that hard. It's just understanding how light that touch to has to be. To do it every single time. That's yeah. I don't know if there's much more I can do except go over the gray in a couple little places and stuff like that. But other than that, what are you what are you thinking? I think it looks pretty great. Yeah. Uh, I've, especially given your previous experience painting, <laughs> that's actually a pretty solid paint job. Um, yeah, I mean, you, you're, the, the, the coats are smooth. Okay. You have good detail work. You, you, you followed the lines really well with the, uh, uh, the, the toes. Hooves. Thank you. Um, the, the lip line to the gum line looks really good on the mouths. And once again, once you have the technique down, all your teeth came out really solid and they all pop against the gum line. It makes it look more, you know, frightening. Yeah, and really yeah, nasty yeah, yeah. Looking. I have to admit, I'm pretty damn proud of this. And God willing, they're going to throw up a picture of my wonderful magic markered uh, uh, <laughs> first attempt back in the day. Oh. Pretty happy with what we got here. I would say I'm a, a notch above where I was, wouldn't you? Very much so. I have a number of notches, actually. Well, good. Well, I'd like to find a way to commemorate that if I possibly could. So there's something I'd like you to do for me. Because okay. I, I like to think of this as kind of a military style painting regime in a way. So here's what I'd like you to do. I'd like to move up the ranks. So if you would, okay. yeah. can you give me a good privates insignia there and then sign underneath? Sure. So we know that I'm starting to rank up. And God willing, I'm going to get better. And every week we're going to rank up. Level one completed, people. Level one completed. Once you get once you get the wash and the dry brushing on there, it's gonna you're gonna be really yeah. Proud okay, of what good, you good, good. Well, thank you so much for coming by and thank you for teaching me all this stuff. And we're certainly on the way. And uh, just remember that every masterpiece starts with a single brush stroke. Yeah, that masterpiece ish. ish. Yeah. Ish.